an aspiring lawyer from a very young age you are very aware of how important your A-level grades are I speak to a few solicit- you know, aspiring solicitors right now and they're just it's terrifying because you just think you're already out of you know this race for the training contract Hello everyone and welcome to the Student Lawyer Podcast Series. Whether you're at school, sixth form, university, thinking about a career in law or exploring law careers, you're in the right place. We are the one-stop shop for student lawyers. If you'd like to join the Student Lawyer as a writer, please email hello at thestudentlawyer.com. This podcast is brought to you by Feed Ignite. Welcome to the Student Lawyer Podcast Series. My name's Camilla and I'm a law graduate currently applying for training contracts and I'll be your host today. Today we're joined by the Student Lawyer's very own Henna Samaya. Henna is a Chartered Legal Executive and is going to be sharing her journey through the Silex process and telling us about how she managed to get qualified without having to pay any of those pesky university £9,000 a year fees. So if you're interested in different ways to qualify, then do stick around for this episode. Alongside her full-time job, Henna also makes videos for our YouTube channel, so make sure you go and check those out too. Without further ado, welcome to The Student Lawyer, Henna. Thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you so much for having me. I love The Student Lawyer and I love being part of it, a very small part. (laughs) That's great to hear. Um, So... Yeah, we've got you on the show to tell us a little bit about your career journey. So would you mind just starting off by telling the listeners a bit about, you know, um, your career journey to date? Yes, of course. So um, I currently work for a financial services company owned by a bank. Um, I work as a regulatory policy governance and legal consultant. I've been at the company for five years, almost five years next month, actually. Wow, time flies. I started in their customer services team, and then I did various roles in the customer services team. I picked up loads of my soft skills from that department and learned so much about the business. I don't think if I didn't do that role, I would know as much detailed things about the business. Um, I then moved on and worked as a trainee legal assistant, governance assistant, and now do the current role I'm in. Fantastic. That sounds like a great journey. Um, It sounds like you've really got to know the place that you're working and it's Mm -hmm. nice to see how you progress through the business. So you said that your role now is a regulatory policy governance and legal consultant. So I know that from you know our previous conversations that you um, are a so you're a chartered um, legal executive is that right yeah and and that's through the Chartered Institute of Legal Executives which is otherwise known as Silex it's a little bit catchier um, could you tell us a little bit more about Silex and what that is for anyone who hasn't heard of it yeah um, so. Again, a bit of a background. In the UK, the lawyers, you can be you can be a lawyer by being the three branches of law, basically. Um, one of them is the barrister, and barristers are the people who go into court, you know, the luxury of wearing wigs. We don't get that. It's the barristers that get that. Um, and then solicitors work for law firms, um, and then chartered legal executives again law firm or working in-house just like solicitors but the way in which they train is different. Um, I trained through Silex. I did this part-time for four years while doing my full-time job. I think the major difference with you know the chartered legal executive route is the way that you study. So the chartered legal executive route is broken down into two parts, level three and level six. Um, Similarly to university, your level three units, you have a lot of compulsory units that you have to do. So those will be the core units, which include things like criminal law, contract law, land law, wills and probate, which I didn't like very much. (laughs) And then you have your client care legal research. 
um, your level three is very similar to A levels. And then you go on to level three, um, no, level six. This is where you can pick your core, um, you know, modules yourself. You pick four of them and two of them are compulsory, which are client care and legal research. Um, the four modules that you pick is what, as a professional, you specialize in. And I think this is where it's different from the traditional solicitor route, where, you know, solicitor will pick different seeds in their training contract and then pick what they specialize in either personally or the seed, you know, the job that they're given from their law firm. Whereas being a Silex student, you pick your specialisms through your study at level six. So is that is that driven at all by your role? So that would would that kind of you know you'd naturally want to pick something that aligned with the job that you're in, though I assume. Yeah, exactly. So I picked the four modules that I picked were company law, company and uh, company law and partnership practice. Um, employment law and contract law and those really help me in my role right now and well hopefully in the future as well um, so I could you know in, th- in theory my roles I can do anything that needs that knowledge yeah that makes sense so when did you decide that you were going to embark on this journey um, of becoming a chartered le- legal executive? And how did you become aware of Silex in the first place? Yes. Yeah, so um, with uh, the decision to do Silex was not a strategic decision. So it wasn't, you know, growing up, I didn't think, oh, I'm going to do Silex because of these advantages or <laughs> anything like that. But I think for me, Silex came to me as a as a in a point where I really needed it. So um, I moved to the UK aged eighteen from Kenya. Okay. Yeah. Um, I lost my dad when I was nine years old. I'm sorry. Um, no, that's okay. Um, and then my mum moved here, got remarried. Um, so as a family, we moved here to create a new life. Um, when I moved here, I had six months of my A-levels left and schools wouldn't take you on to just, you know, do six months of school. And <laughs> me being me, I thought, you know, I, I, I was in this place where I was like a race for life. You know, I want to do this, this, this. And, you know, the timeline is this. I have to finish my A-levels and get into university. Um, and I decided to homeschool my last six months of A-levels. Mm. Um, in theory, that seemed, you know, quote unquote easy, but being taught at a school for, you know, so much of your life and then being self-studying is very different. And I think I didn't realise the challenges that came with it. And unfortunately, I didn't get the best grades. Um, so I got a triple B and didn't get my um, first choice of university. and. All of a sudden, I thought, oh, my God, I can't become a lawyer because being a law student or, you know, an aspiring lawyer from a very young age, you are very aware of how important your A-level grades are. Um, And, you know, you feel I speak to a few, you know, aspiring solicitors right now and they're just it's terrifying because you just think you're already out of, you know, this race for the training contract. Um, So my fears at that point were, number one, I didn't get into my first choice of university and my grades aren't great. And the second part of it was going into university is a huge financial burden. I have a single mom, international student, so she would have to pay £11,000 just for academics that's so I just thought, that it's so much, isn't it? So much. I didn't even think um, about that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. to be completely honest, I didn't think about it until I got to a crossroad where I was like, oh, wow, like, yeah. can, I, can I justify that payment? Um, so I took a gap year 
Um, which, you know, if any students are thinking about doing it, I would highly recommend it. I wish I took it when I first moved here instead of homeschooling. But, you know, it, it's all in the past and I'm glad I took the gap year when I did. Um, well, I have to fact, say, sorry to yeah. interrupt, I have to no. just say, as soon as you homeschooled yourself, I think you did really well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, you know, getting three Bs. I think a lot of law firms ask for A, B, B generally. So yeah. you only missed off one of that and you, you taught yourself, you know. I, th- I think that's brilliant. So, yeah. But anyway, carry on. <laughs> Thank you. That's very kind. <laughs> um, I think thinking back, I don't think they were horrible, but, you know, you put so much pressure on yourself course, because yeah. those weren't, and we're, we're right now we're speaking just after A-level grades, you know, there's been such a, you know, such a huge impact on A-level grades, but they, you, because your predicted grades were better than that, all of a sudden you think, oh God, like this, yeah. this isn't, I can do more than this. I understand. Yeah. Um, like I had all those thoughts and in my gap year I worked just as an admin assistant at a local office um, where I'm based. Um, I spoke to a lot of people and you know a lot of people who I worked with were at the time doing the ACCA part-time and they say to me why don't you do something like that like you you enjoy working here so why don't you just you know find a job and work part-time. I mean, you know, work either part-time or full-time and study. And I thought, okay, that, that's actually a good idea. So I looked more into, you know, I literally just put onto Google how to study law part-time and um, got a bunch of options. The university was offering part-time. There's Open University. Um, there was Silex. And the more I read about Silex, the better the option felt. Um, the reasons for that is, a, I could work while studying. Um, the other two university options didn't give me enough flexibility to still have a full-time job. Whereas Silex, you can pretty much, you know, if I want to do only three units a year, I could do that. It was very much up to me when and when I want to pick my units, when I want to sit the exams, whether it's January, June or all June. It was quite flexible in that sense. Um, the second one was the cost of Silex, again, marginally lower than all the other options. And the third one, and which was pretty much my deciding factor, is to qualify as a lawyer through Silex, I don't need a training contract. Wow, that's definitely an appeal. <laughs> I know, my biggest appeal. Literally, when I found out that, I was like, sign me up wherever wherever I have to sign just sign me up um so instead of doing a training contract you have to do three years of qualifying employment in those three years you have to do 20 hours per week of wholly legal work okay um and then after three years you qualify as a lawyer that's brilliant yeah wow and you and you just found that from from searching online it's it's fantastic isn't it because I mean I don't think that that, that many people know about Silex and I think no. I think it's brilliant um and I guess it is similar to that um I think you mentioned ACCA I don't know if that's the accounting yeah um, version but I guess they kind of work in similar ways don't they so yeah, yeah. again the flexibility of ACCA is why so many people I think do it I mean yeah if someone doing ACC is listening to this, I'm really sorry. I don't know much about it, but I think it's flexible. <laughs> so what has your journey been like completing the Silex qualifications um, over the over the four years that you did that? Mm-hmm. Um, it was a mixed. Um, I think, you know, where I wasn't set to do Silex, I very much questioned my decision the first few years, which, again, looking back, I think... Okay, but every I still go through that even today when making decisions. So I think the first few years of doing anything new, whether you're doing Silex or going to university, you will question it. So I think I did question myself. But other than that, I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I learned a lot from Silex and not just academically, but I learned so much about myself. So like time management, I was working all time 
and studying part-time, which took a lot of time management. Um, but I was grateful for all the support that my, you know, where I work, I got. Um, at the universities you go to, all the professors would know that you're working full-time and that would be taken into consideration whether that's, you know, giving you the support you need in terms of the homework that you're given. It wouldn't be as much as you would, I think, be given at a full-time university. Um, Silex are quite good with, you know, exams. If you have booked onto it and you can't do them for some reason, Silex is quite good with, you know, helping you out to just change them or anything like that. So I think overall I had quite a good experience. Um, I also, when picking your level six subjects, it can be quite daunting because it's making a very big decision, you know, that that is what you will specialize in. Um, a lot of people that I studied with were working full time, similar to me. So that helps into navigating where you want to go. But I think if you aren't sure, take one of those subjects that you're unsure about at level three. So for me, taking contract law at level three helped me. Um, company law, I always kind of knew I wanted to do it. And same with employment. It, you know, it was something I was interested in. But if there's anything you're a bit like, oh, do I want to do this? Take them at level three. Level three is a lot easier as well. So you'll get the flavor of it and then it'll make you be sure of what you want to do. Um, yeah. You mentioned qualifying work experience and I just kind of wanted to know a little bit more about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so again, Silex are quite supportive in helping you to figure out if your work is qualifying. Um, you have on their website, you can find forms which describe what they mean well not but you know they wouldn't it's it's quite similar to what the super exam is so they wouldn't define what a role looks like again giving you the flexibility but you can they've got outcomes that you need to meet um so if you feel like your role meets the outcomes um you can also you know send your job description to silex to review and they can say you know on a merit if that ma matches what they're looking for or what more you can do within that role to match it so i think again the support from salix is good and you some for something you know for a lot of people who've done salix if you've worked in that organization for a while and if you have the flexibility to ask for more or less i think that will help you doing the qualifying employment part of the job Brilliant. Yeah, Silex sounds so flexible and like they're really trying to help you. So that sounds really yeah. great. And is there anything you didn't like about Silex? Um, to be completely honest, the way it's still viewed by a lot of people, I think, A, it's not talked about enough. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, you know, I don't know how that works from the, you know, quote unquote, marketing side. Yeah. Um, but when it is talked about, I have heard a few people saying, you know, it, it just isn't recognized or it's not as good. I don't personally understand why um, going through Silex. And I've known a few people who did. So they did the um, law degree and then they did. So Silex offers something called the graduate, um, you know, the graduate qualification. So instead of doing the LPC, you can do the graduate qualification. Um, so some people do it if they find getting a training contract quite difficult. So instead of doing the LPC and then still looking for a training contract, I personally know people who did the Silex graduate program. And, you know, they found it as difficult or more than their law degree. And, you know, it, that route did help them then get into qualifying employment. Sure. And you know you learn I mean I was working for four years so I've already learned so many skills and I still get comments like oh no it just it's not as recognized we don't think Silex people who qualify through Silex have skills to become a city lawyer again quote-unquote city lawyer um, mm -hmm. I don't understand so I think that perception that is still ingrained sometimes had you know you again it's the questioning the route you've taken when you 
either hear people saying it or you you know you read it on an article online well yeah that's uh, that's a shame isn't it because if anything you've got more skills than someone that's sort of done a training contract well not always of course that's a no. blanket statement but you've worked alongside studying for four years so you have so many more um so much more experience in a commercial setting than someone mm. who maybe just graduated so yeah I don't think that's fair um so that 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 is a shame hopefully um things will start to maybe change a bit especially like you said with the SQE coming in yeah um yeah I mean that sort of brings me on to another question that I wanted to ask um, mm-hmm. do you know how the SQE will impact those who choose to study through Silex would is it going to kind of overtake it or do you think they'll still run sort of parallel um I think it will be quite parallel but it will so one of the barriers that you know I thought was quite well one of the barriers that I thought wasn't quite fair was so after you complete the Silex qualification it's still not a recognized law degree okay. so yeah so if you want to then cross qualify as a solicitor you would have to do a GDL and wow. then the LPC after Silex yeah oh okay um, so you can become a lawyer, but you can't cross qualify as a solicitor. You know, like you're under the umbrella, you're a lawyer, but yeah. you can't become a solicitor. Um, so I think what the super exam will do is give access to people who do want to be a solicitor the chance to do the super exam and then be a solicitor. But on the other hand, it might also give Silex the recognition because the training will be very similar. Yeah. So maybe right now, you know, like I said on the, on the point earlier, it's not, you know, there's a lot of, no, you need to do a training contract to be a city lawyer. Maybe if firms take on the super exams, you know, you can be a solicitor without doing the traditional training contract, which is what, you know, Silex qualification offers, then maybe there wouldn't be such a huge difference between qualifying through Silex and then doing the Silex work experience or just doing a law degree and then a super exam and doing, you know, the recognised employment and through after the super exam or during the super exam because, again, the super exam is quite flexible where it allows you to do the qualifying employment while you're still, you know, studying for the super exam. Sure. And what's the support system like? It, do you have classes that you go to or is it online? Um, do you, are you able to meet like classmates? You know, mm-hmm. were you able, was it like a social, were you lacking like a social element that you might have got at uni? What was your experience like there? Mm, so you definitely, you, you do miss out on the social events. I mean, I would see my friends' pictures on Freshers' Week and I was like, oh, man, <laughs> you, know, you don't have that. I mean, I couldn't do a Freshers' Week finish at, you know, a crazy hour in a club and then go to work the next morning. I just, I physically <laughs> couldn't. <laughs> so, yes, the social aspect you do lack. So, you know, that is almost a, a thing to take into consideration as well because it – with university, the academic aspect, but also the personal growth and the, you know, living three years away from family, you get that experience, which is hard to get through Silex. Yeah. Um, with the doing, you know, how you go to classes, etc., you can pick how you want to do them. So Silex offers Silex Law School, which can be all online, or you can pick... Um, you know, a training centre that does it close to you. Um, So I found I switched my training centres. I did different at level three um, training centre and a different one at level six, simply because the units I wanted to do at level six weren't available in the first centre that I did it at. But both centres were incredible. Um, I used to go for evening classes. So straight after work, I'd go for a class for three hours and then get home at like 10 p.m but that worked for me if so if you know because of your personal circumstances people can't go into the class physically you can do it online um you can also do it blended i know some people do it blended where they'd go for some classes and they'd do some um at home 
Um, all the people I have met through Silex Touchwood have been absolutely incredible. You know, I met people who had kids at home and were still studying and it just, I think everyone I met inspired me because everyone had a different reason why they wanted to do Silex. That's so interesting. Yeah, it's, it sounds great that you can really fit it around your lifestyle and decide to yeah. pick some modules to go into the class and then to do some. Yeah, I mean, it sounds it sounds like such a great um, such such a great program. And do you have any uh, last words for those who might be thinking about whether to go down the Silex route or, or whether to go down the LLB route? It's really hard to do, but once you've made a decision be happy and sure of it you know I, I was I, I was told this analogy by someone a, a decision is almost like you're on a boat and the boat has a very small hole if you make the wrong decision the hole is very small it's okay you're not going to drown yet you'll yeah. keep going so just make your decision go with it and be happy with it um what if you are joining silex what really helped me is um joining one of silex branches so silex has different social branches so i joined the silex london branch where i could meet um students from you know all over other um training centers but also professionals um while doing silex again one of the questions was oh my god will i ever qualify um and you know you meet you you're like i always see students around me you know are we are we all gonna ever qualify but doing the you know london branch networking events really helped me people who are professionals through silex um and you get really nice you know tips and pointers from them even if it's literally just if you're confused on how the qualifying employment works or at at your level two if you're confused on how to pick your level six modules it's always best to network with the people who've done it already. Um, so yes, network and be sure about your decision is the That's two that. things I'd say. That sounds so wise. Um, <laughs> and it's really good that you, they've got a, a um, like a network of support because yeah. that's really important, I think. Definitely. have gone through the same um, path as you, so you can talk to them and just, um, yeah, just get advice from them and, Mm. and uh, see what you could be doing in a few years as well oh yes <laughs> <laughs> so um we also know you from legal exchange with henna don't we so mm. would you like to tell yes. us a bit more about that platform that you that you run mm-hmm. um yeah of course so um i'd wanted to start a legal blog for a while just to share my journey talk about it maybe along the way hopefully i can help someone um, so I, st- I got a bit more time during lockdown, as do, did most of us, and um, started off legal exchange with Henna. I'm quite active on Instagram, and I post things that I, I either I'm inspired by or, I'm, you know, it's helped me. Um, I do um, a feature on it called Feature Friday, where I speak to people and learn more about their journeys. Um, because I just think you don't know a person unless you know their journey and you can learn more from people's journeys. So I try to share more about other people's journeys and my journeys. And I hope you find me there and I can help you. So is that, um, do you speak to people who've done the Silex or is it you speak to people from the legal profession in general? Yeah, um, legal profession in general. I have... I think especially now I've had a lot of messages from people who want to do Silex which is so nice because I wish I had that someone um, when I was picking Silex because I wanted to pick it but I was like I don't know anyone who does it I met people later on but when I initially wanted to do it I had like these questions and I just I used to call the college a lot I was like I'm really sorry it's me again (laughs) Um, so yeah and again another tip just call the institution that you're going to study with that that's what they're there for don't be nervous or scared or whatever so some of, some of the things I asked I, I promise you they were silly but you know you, you need to know these things it's important so um yeah but I've had a lot of messages from people who are thinking of doing silex which is always so so nice and I think it also also helped me meet 
Well, look, I mean, I've I joined it to help, but I've read so many things that have helped me so much. So yeah, I've I've loved the legal community. Brilliant. And finally, where can listeners find you um, if they want um, to connect with you and, and learn more? Yes, of course. So you can find me on Instagram under the name Legal Exchange with Henna. Um, I also do videos for the student lawyer. Um, which you can find on YouTube. Just go on YouTube and try type the student lawyer and you'll see videos of me and other brilliant people on the student lawyer video team. So yeah, Thank find you. us there. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> That's okay. Great. Well, I'll leave the details in the description box anyway so the listeners can um, find you um, easily. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us today, Hannah. It's been it's been so inspiring to hear about your journey um, and the really educational, uh, educational as well um, to learn more about Silex and the benefits. And it really does sound like a great program. And hopefully this um, episode has inspired some people. Thank you. Okay. Until next time. Goodbye. Thank you. To hear more of the Student Lawyers podcast, hit the subscribe button and leave us a star rating and review. If you would like to join the Student Lawyer as a writer, please email hello at thestudentlawyer.com. We'd like to thank Felix Knight for producing this podcast today. Thank you.